Ah. All right. Hey, we need a new mat, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. Get that shit out of here. Oh, this show fucking sucks, Jace. Well, who even watched this shit? Wait, wait, wait. It gets better after the 27th season. <laughs> oh, hi. I didn't see you there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Welcome to tonight's episode of Kitchen Table Cable. I'm Rafa. I'm Derek. I'm Jace, I guess. And today, we are talking about deck building heuristics. So, Rafa, what are deck building heuristics? You know, Jace, that's a good question. Derek! <laughs> <laughs> Derek, Derek prepped this episode. <laughs> Okay. The preface to all of you, Derek. Preface yep. episode. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, this is my idea. And before we called it like deck building strategies, deck building sure. whatever. And then sure. I look at the show notes today, <laughs> <laughs> and he's changed the word to something I've never heard. Come on, Bro, guys. What are you thinking? Come fucking on. Italian? Oh my god, dude. <laughs> dude. We're gonna alienate a whole country, bro. <laughs> No, yeah. To my Italian viewers, I'm sorry. That De building heuristics. Heuristics. What does heuristics what mean? Heuristics yeah, right. mean? So, right. like, you know, what's the generally accepted way to build your deck or the guidelines that most people claim you should follow? And shit like that. You know, how many lands you should play, how many creatures you should play, how many removal spells, blah, 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 blah. blah. I get you. Okay. Right. okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's still deck building strategy stuff, but, you know, we're a show now. We got to make it sound legit. And uh, strategy was... We have to use big boy well, words. Yeah, we got to use big words. Yeah, 100%. Right. We got to use big words. Big words, sure. man. Big yeah, words yeah. for big men. Yeah, but... Um, yes, I was kind of inspired for this idea. Um, I mean, it's only the second episode of the show, yeah. obviously. But, um, our, you know, we primarily play Commander, mm -hmm. right? We dabble here and there. Limited, obviously, all the time. But that builds itself, right? That's just part of the limited environment. Exactly. But um, we primarily... Play commander and so we're constantly building decks and tweaking decks and talking to people about building decks and doing league which is a whole deck building thing on its own and, i got you, know, you. and so yeah. it's like kind of a foundational point in my opinion uh, to approach the the game in the format that we're primarily going to be covering i've got you and last episode if you were listening you can also find last episode in the description below this video on youtube yeah. or the previous <clears throat> button in your podcasting app uh, we talked about ourselves, so now I guess we are talking about how we build decks. Yeah, pretty much, right. So yeah. kind of the guidelines that we follow, uh, again, there's generally kind of socially accepted or however you want to call it, you know, guidelines that most people follow, depending on power level and all that jazz. I've got you. Right, so how do, how do, we, how do we approach that in building our decks, what we look for, how do we utilize that kind of information, or how do we utilize it and go completely against the flow? So, okay. for example, you mentioned last time you married a deck plays 16 lands. I'm pretty sure you look at every website and it's going to recommend you don't play 16 lands in your commander deck. <laughs> True, but, but, but there is like probably two other Mario decks on any any website playing yeah, I mean, Char Belcher. Sure, 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 right? And so that's, that's, you know, how do you, obviously you follow the normal guidelines, the deck doesn't work, so then you take that, take what the, what the deck does, you tweak everything, and that's where you end up where you end up, right? What do you think yeah. the normal guidelines yeah. are, Derek? Speaking of. Spe speaking of. What right. do you tell a new player? When a new player is coming up to you saying, hey, I want to build a commander deck, you don't tell them your own personal things. I mean, no. at least I wouldn't. I say buy a pre-con. Well, there's that. <laughs> there's that. <laughs> but if they're trying to build their deck from scratch, if you want to build what are you telling them? Uh, how many ramp sources are you telling them to put in yeah, deck? How right, many lands? So. How many creatures? Like... You know what? What do you? What is the agree? Uh, you think agreed upon average? So for I think for most amount. people, look around thirty four to thirty eight lands, mm -hmm. right? Uh, thirty six being the you know general number that most people follow, right? Uh, so you know you want what generally ten to twelve ramp sources, and commander especially. We like to play battle cruiser. The mm -hmm. more casual you are, probably the more ramp sources you have. You should have honestly, but ten to twelve ramp sources. Um, you need interaction, so that's kill spells, that's board wipes, counter spells. Mm -hmm. You know, you want a dozen or so of those, generally. Um, card draw is probably one of the harder ones to evaluate. Some people will say less, some people will say more, but generally half a dozen or so, on average, most, what most people say. Um, and then, 
you know, you fill in the rest with your creatures and your you know, utility spells and stuff like that, right? So probably 25 or so creatures, I would assume. Um, I'm really bad about following general hur heuristics because of the way that I build my deck. I don't follow any guidelines, right? Kind of, for me, the deck, the heuristics fall into the deck when you're building it. I want to do X with my deck. Gotcha. How do I make that work? Mm -hmm. And then testing and testing and testing and goal fishing and running it through and going, okay, I need more ramp, I need more draw. And I go from that. I kind of ignore all the baseline stuff. Um, except for the land thing, I started upping up all, upping all the land numbers in all my decks. Mm -hmm. Generally play 38 in most of my casual decks now, which is generally considered high, but I have a lot less, there are a lot less mm -hmm. high. issues, I, yeah. Yeah, right. So I'd much rather, especially playing casually, I'd much rather guarantee all my lands Mm -hmm. be able to play a land every turn and play all my spells, then not, right? Um, again, this is just for casual CEDH as its own guideline, mm -hmm. its own it's monster, its own obviously, right? But, yeah, for casual, um, yeah. So, I mean, taking all that stuff into account, how do you guys go about starting your deck? What kind of guidelines do you follow? Or do you have any guidelines that specifically that you follow? I usually start with the commander. If I don't... And, and, and I don't mean like I start by picking a commander. You, most of the time I've picked a commander, especially like if there's new sets during spoiler season. But I won't actually start construction on the deck until I have the physical card okay. in my hands. That just helps me, um, you know, it's tangible. I, you know, I've got it. I don't have to wait. Makes sense. I don't have to, to trade or anything. I just have to, I have it already. I can start building it. Um, especially because like a, a, I know most people are in, are in this category where they have collections of their own. They have big, uh, boxes, they have binders. You mean like those boxes over there? Those boxes right there yeah, that man. you can't see. Okay. Um, <laughs> don't look at those, they're unorganized. <laughs> um, you know, going through the cards and then... Uh, let's, I, it's been different for a few decks recently. But what I would do is I would find my dual lands and my, what's it called, um, utility lands. Okay. I would start with those, and I would usually get about 35. Like you've said, uh, I have been upping the number of lands in my decks, especially basic lands. Um, a lot more basic lands in my bad. decks than uh, <laughs> than normally. <laughs> um, and that's usually for, for the three and below. So for three-color decks, three two-color decks, mo monocolor yeah, yeah. decks, they all follow kind of that, where I start with the commander, I get the lands, so I don't have to worry about them. Because I already know, like, if I'm playing a red black deck, I've got all the red black things. I've got Blood Crypt, I've got okay. the Snarl, I've got all the other things. I don't have to worry about finding those or finding oh. spots for those. Are you, are you cheating? Because there's not a red black Snarl. Whatever it's called. It's the one from the, the old the one. The one from oh, Shadows yeah. of Rainstruck. The, the, yeah. the old one. Yeah. Those, Before they were those, <laughs> those lands suck. These are uh, my, my least favorite land cycle by far. Wait, really? Yeah, it's, because you, it's because, because you play so many colors. Oh. You're playing them in okay. two colors, they're fine. Sure, yeah, two color decks, 100% you play them. Yeah. Almost always. It's a dual land. It's mm. just a dual. No, pathways. Pathways suck. No, oh. I like pathways. Oh. Come on. Pathways We're starting suck. off this episode. Yeah, that's a bad spot. That, I love pathways. We're going to fucking jump Speaking of pathways love. sucking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the next thing I look for are cards um, are cards that work with the deck. I know I'd find, okay. uh, and not, not any like specific categories, I would find, um, like if, I need to have some removal that works. Like if I have a token-based deck, something that like sacrifices a token to do something. Okay, sure. Um, Your bone splinters. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. Um, and board wipes. There's a couple of them like that. Um, and I would find ramp pieces that work, like in the in the in the Hobbit's deck. The okay, precon. When when upgrading deck. that, I you know before things were spoiled, um, and the decklists were spoiled, I gathered my gilded geese, uh, <coughs> uh, my savvy hunters, and everything. You know all the things that worked with food. I was able to, you know, I was like, okay, these are going to work for the spots in the deck that would be replaced by, like, a skull okay. clamp or something. Sure, okay. Uh, so I like to find those those cards that do the thing that the deck wants to do and then fill in the gaps later. So so essentially, for instance, your card draw has to make sense with the deck. Yeah. And not just general card, card mm -hmm. draw, stuff like that. Yeah, so, so like, I, I, I that. recently, recent mm -hmm. example, I have it on me. I don't think we'll be able to do this every time. But recently, I just built this mono blue deck built around flash creatures and ninjutsu. And so, this is the commander. The commander. Oh, good segue, mm -hmm. Derek. There's two of them. Oh, the Allura deck. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Allura, yeah. Mary, Thief. So, I, I just, okay. on a whim, I wanted a mono blue deck. And 
I never really <coughs> seen in a Laura deck, so Red Witch she does, she okay. makes things unblockable and bounces yeah. up to your hand. That sounds a lot like ninjas to me. Okay. Um Feywild, the, the background is Feywild you Visitors. Get extra, that, creatures. Extra, creatures. extra creatures. That came in last because I had no idea what background I wanted to do. You didn't even you don't even need a background. Exactly. She was good on her own. And so it started off as like a, a bunch of little creatures and then as many ninjas as I could find in mono blue. Okay. And then I started to think, well, if I'm bouncing them to my hand, you know, I can replace like these counter spells and things with flash creatures, creatures that okay. counter things on when they enter the battlefield. Oh, I um, and so I could make them unblockable and return them to that. So the counter spell problem. Spells that are spry. spry yeah, yeah. I, I've okay. cut uh, a lot of the draw spells because I have things like Biden of Thassa or uh, Coastal Piracy. Coastal Piracy, Because yeah. when I'm attacking with my unblockable creature, I get to draw a card and so I don't have to I play like, like Preordain or Serum Visions or any, any cantrips. I can just okay. play these spells that draw me way more cards than one or two other cards would do. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, like I never see deal. you put a Ristic Study in your deck. I'm sure if you because Ristic Study is thirty dollars, Jace. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just, true. It's just like a generic. Not everybody card has draw. a few of them laying around. Now, like Mr. Vermora, Mr. Vermora got reprinted, and that yep. it tanked the price to like two bucks two for a bucks, while. Yep. It's four bucks right now, that's I think. Good. Four bucks. And so okay. that I could I could reasonably play because I have a lot of them now. Opening a lot of Dominaria. Not That's enough. true. Uh, remastered. That's true. Um, price is also a thing I kind of look at. If I don't own the card, I'm less likely to put it in. True. True. And that's why, like, to to add to that and kind of talk about that a little bit, right? Like, if I I start by choosing a commander or something that I want to do, mm -hmm. I like this commander. They look interesting, or I want to make a reanimated deck. Gotcha. I started one of those two areas. Um, and once I eventually decide not to make them all a tribal deck, because that's the hole that the whole time I fall in, and I always want to build tribal decks because flavor is awesome, I figure my shit out, right? And then I go, okay, cool, that's where I start, and I start picking up stuff there. So if I have a commander, for instance, recently with Thali and the Gitrog monster that I want to build, and I said, okay, I want to play this deck, but I'm not going to build it until I pick up a Cultivated Colossus, which is 15 bucks at the time or whatever. Right, so it's like, cool, until I get that card, I'm not building the deck. And once I eventually got it, then I started building the deck going from there. But, yeah, so kind of tying in that, if I don't have the expensive cards, either I'm not playing them, mm -hmm. right, or I don't start building the deck until I get them, right, via trade or, you know, uh, credit for winning tournaments. You know, whatever that is. Okay. Um, or just picking up here and there. But, um, yeah, I, I can see that. I like that start. What about you, what about you Jace? How do you, you build decks you just, from week to week? How yeah. do you pre I mean, sure, you have to start over every week, basically. So this uh, should be an easy topic for you to talk about, Dave. Yeah, the, uh, deck building is, like, one of my favorite things in Magic, and yet it's I'm so, like, fickle on it. Basically, I, I, I like to use the analogy of puzzle pieces. Me and Derek, you know, we talked about this before, but we, you know, deck building is a puzzle, you know, and how you approach said puzzle is different between all three of us. <coughs> like, how I said, you know, you approach the puzzle piece of building a commander deck is okay I have all these puzzle pieces lying around what can I do to put these puzzle pieces together and make a cohesive puzzle what Derek does he's, he goes okay I have this the centerpiece what can I do to start building on to this to make this a full puzzle and yeah. what I do is I go okay I have this puzzle piece and I got another puzzle piece and I got another one <laughs> <laughs> I mean what I'm just saying is I, I, how I like to build decks is I take, it's, it's like in draft, how you have signpost cards. I basically build decks by signpost. So I have this card that I want to have put in a deck. You know, it's usually a legendary creature, right? And I, okay, what, what deck can I build to serve the function of this card? So say a recent example is Neheb, right? So I'm still trying to find a deck for it, but how I would approach building a deck where I would put Neheb is I would look at Neheb and then I go, okay. What synergizes with Neheb? What what it's doing? So I would have to go down the damage route. You know what what would I do? You know your opponent's losing life. Okay, well then I'm, maybe I play Dragon's Approach. You know it's just it's all that sort of stuff. Finding what synergizes with the the, the signposts. I have a deck so, for your Neheb. Yeah, I, I know something. What is that? Talk what about, is it? Talk about it afterwards. Oh okay. Okay. Yeah, I got you. Yeah man. But yeah, just that's build a, just build a Neheb deck. Yeah, well, well, <laughs> you figured it out. No <laughs> oh. way. Oh no way. Uh, but so, okay. so yeah, that's how I approach it. And usually the signposts are pre versions of cards that I picked up and I'm like, okay, I've got the pretty one. I better play with it and find something to do. So yeah, that's that's how I approach deck building. What about you, Derek? Okay. What are your heuristics? 
we or, kind of already talked about that a little bit. But yeah. let's let's I guess let's go into details about now let's go into de- details about like heuristics, what we do with them. Right. <laughs> so again, on average thirty six lands in the deck. When do you play more, when do you play less? I tend to hover around thirty three. I feel like thirty three is a great number. Some people say that in your really, regular in, your in my in my regular in my regular commander decks is thirty three. This is why you're always man you're screwed. God <laughs> fuck. Which, just, is, which is the reason I, I was the same way. I used to play thirty five <laughs> no matter what. Yeah. Thirty five or less. Um, depending and and this is still true, that depending on the curve. Now it's thirty six, depending on the curve. Um, so like my Maria deck, the, the average CMC is zero. Right. So I don't need lands and yeah. and, and the strategy with that is I want to remove lands from my deck in general. Right. And so it's having, a charbelter deck. Yeah, yeah, char-belter. So that, that's why I want to remove lands. So having less lands works. Plus I have the busted right. zero mana artifacts. So I don't need them. Okay. Um, but yeah, in, so, in that, so in that instance, you when you built Maria, I know when it was League, it wasn't 16 lands. No, right? it was so still it was like, closer to 20 something. And then you just slowly cut them down yeah. to fit the theme of the deck. And eventually, once you put Charbelter in, you were like, all right, I got to, we got to axe as many as we can. Mm-hmm. I started so, playing more we, more of those filter spells, the ones that got lands out of my deck. So you can stop and go, okay, I can't go any lower mm-hmm. than 16 because I never get a land of my opening hand. True. Right? Now, once I get a Mox Diamond. Per, percent, percentage on that is, you know. Yeah. But in, my, reg- in my regular commander decks, I, uh, I've run around 36. And like I said, it always depends on the curve. I have higher CMC things. Yeah. I'll run close to 37, 38. Um, but if it's, if it's yeah. lower, then I'll run lower. Yeah, trying I mean, to stay I'm, around thirty six. I definitely, after listening to some other podcasts, watching videos, stuff like that, I definitely, I, I stick to thirty eight, mm-hmm. and then I start cutting if I end up with too many lands. Man, that's a lot of my, lands, man. Right? Okay, but you got to guarantee your spells, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like my the elf deck where I had to pick up the Lord of the Rings precon and essentially turn it into a blue green elf deck. Added more elves and stuff like that. It only runs thirty land, mm-hmm. which is a high number when you look at other elf ball decks. Right? Yeah. They generally run like twenty six, twenty eight. Uh, but I still run 30 because there's still cards in there that cost 5 and 7 mana. Mm-hmm. But you do have a bunch of mana dorks and, you know, it runs 14, 15 mana dorks. Whatever, right, kind of thing. But um, I definitely started with 38 and then slowly started cutting that stuff down. And whenever I would add in two mana dorks, I would take a land out. And add in a Priest of Titania, and I could take a land out, right? So mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of how where I start with that, right? 38 is my base. Um Thalion gets wrong when it's 42. Or 42 because it's a land stack, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I feel like 42 so- sounded like not enough, honestly. Because you look at Omnath decks that run 48 to 50. Which is insane. Um, absurd. <laughs> so I mean, I've, my, seen some, I've seen some Titania decks that are running like 46. My like, Titania okay. deck runs 40. Yeah, so. right. And so I put in 42 thinking it wasn't going to be enough. And I had like two to four cards where I was like, okay, if I need to put in more lands, this is what I'm going to cut. Mm-hmm. Uh, and after playing a little bit, 42, definitely, because of the way that the deck plays, and I have a way to draw cards in the command zone and stuff like that, like, I definitely, 42 seems like a good amount, uh, but I expected to play more, for sure, because it is a land stack, and that's kind of the focus. You want to make sure you always have lands. If I have 22 ways to get basics out of my deck, I better have 22 basics kind of thing, right? Uh, but yeah, okay, so looking back to the lands... Uh, I have a question. What... What do y'all think the ratio of utility lands to mana producing Ooh, lands okay. should be? Okay. Should is the uh, the big question. I usually okay. okay. I'll start this one off because I fucking love Emergent Zone. Emergent Zone is one of my favorite cards. It goes in. I put it in pretty much every deck I own, right? So, uh, I usually start off with three utility lands. That's usually my limit. I don't usually like to play a whole bunch of utility. Lands. Wait, so, three, so the wait, rest of your three lands are utility basics lands and out of thirty three. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Really? I really, I like, a lot of my decks are very mana hungry, very pip hungry. And, and okay, and what so do you, what do you this... consider a utility land? Okay, that was my next question. Oh, what that is, is if, question. So, so if like you I... look at utility lands versus mana producing lands, if we assume utility lands don't make any mana, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Cool, right. Maze of Death, absolutely, I play it as a land, as a spell slot in my deck. Yeah. I don't play it as yeah. a land slot because it doesn't have for mana. Mm-hmm. Right. But, if you look at utility lands, Emergent Zone still produces mana, but even the lands that produce mana, you only play like three yeah. in the deck. Really? Well, I mean... It seems like a very low I only amount. play three colorless 
Oh, well, that's a couple oh, okay, of okay, so that's different. Yeah. Okay, so, so utility lands so don't we're to, think of Vesaju, that's a utility land. Oh, well, Vesaju is, is like, it's right. so, it's so, it's so, it's so free. All the channel lands. So, channel so I guess, lands. I guess that brings my count up to like eight or uh, nine. MDFCs. See, there you go. Uh, well, right. see, MDFCs, I do count as lands. So, but yeah. I count it as a utility land slot. Yeah. Right. <laughs> because either A, they always, they always come into play tapped, or the one that you pay for your life, right? But... It, the way that I look at MDFC lands is I hope to play them as a spell. Mm -hmm. I hope to play the spell, which is why I don't play every MDFC land in every deck that I can, right? But uh, Malakir Rebirth and, you know, black decks who care about reanimating creatures or ETB effects or LTB effects or whatever, sure, absolutely. I hope to play it as a spell. And if it's an opening hand and I need it as a land, it's a land, mm -hmm. right? But I, I consider that a utility land in my slot. Right. So taking that into consideration, I'm more of a like 60-40 kind of person. Okay. 40% like of my I want 40% of my lands to do something besides just tap for mana. I got you. Right. Uh, now, emergence zone taps for mana, absolutely utility, but that's stuff like scavenger grounds, you know, reliquary tower. Uh, reliquary tower, absolutely, right? Um, I count things like uh, Path of Ancestry, Ancestry, Opal Palace, or Utility Lands. Okay. Right? Oh, okay. I don't I don't put those in a deck unless I want that effect. I got you. Right. Opal Palace, I put in a deck where I expect my commander to die at some point. And if I want to recast them, I want them to be bigger. Cool. If I don't care that my commander is going to be, if I don't think my commander is going to die a lot, or I don't care if it dies and I don't need it to be bigger, I don't play it because it's, you know, I'm not, I'm not using that effect. Uh, Path of Ancestry starts out in every single one of my decks because every single one of my decks starts as a tribal deck. <laughs> <laughs> I have a problem. I do. I can tell. Uh, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I only played it in like half of the decks or so because then I'll go through the creature count. Book and, cool. It's a, it's, it's, it's a five-color land, right? Taps for any color. Comes into play tap, sure. But it taps for any color, whatever you need. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. But it's just a tap five-color land. I'd rather have a different utility land if I'm not going to use that effect. Um, so, yeah, I kind of break it up. Now, I, it still depends on the deck. Niv-Mizzet, I play uh, zero utility lands in my Niv-Mizzet deck. Okay. My five-color Niv-Mizzet deck. All of those type of uh, colors, and it's a very heavy multicolor. But it's, yeah, I mean, I play, and the land base on that is very strict due to, uh, I'm OCD, yeah. kind of. You know, I like all my I, stuff. I think we all are. <laughs> right, that's the issue with my basic, and uh, playing your braids deck sucks. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> Every base gets different. You asshole. Okay. Um, what more but, player ones now? Yeah, oh, but, fuck. right, it's like, okay, cool, if I'm playing the Triomes, I play all 10. So a niv that I play 10 Triomes, play 10 Fetches, I play 10 Shocks, play 5 Basics, one of each Basic. That leaves me, I play 38 lands, so that leaves me with 3 lands left over. So currently I play a Command Tower, City of Brass, and the Pillar of the Perus. That's a good right, one. Because everything that's in the deck that isn't either A, a green mana dork, or an artifact is multicolored. Gotcha. So, right. I have no room for utility lands. I don't... Some people might consider special lands utility lands and stuff like that. I guess triumphs maybe because you could cycle them. Some, I don't really in that case, but I could see. I could see that. I've got you. i got you. So, I love to play utility lands. Like, they're extra spell slots. I don't play as many as I think I should, honestly. There's a lot of ones that just, they do something, but it's not enough. Yeah. Like, I there are definitely that. those that are, like, staples in the format. Like, Scavenger Grounds, I, I yeah. used to put in every one of my decks. Would you so bog? Every deck that plays every, bog. Every deck is black. Plays bog. bog in oh, place of a swamp. I don't know if Braids has a bog in there. But. Well, it should be in there. Oh, cancel the show. Cancel yeah, it. It's gone. Cancel the show, man. It's gone, Control, man. Sorry. But, I mean, like I said, there are a lot of ones that are just they're there. Their effects are nice. Like, Maze of It. It's really nice. I have, there's. Not a single Maze of Earth has made it into any of my decks. See, I, I love Maze of Earth. I hate Maze it, <laughs> It's so bad. What? Jace. I like Homeward, Homeward Path. Homeward Path Homeward is Path an is amazing oh, effect. Oh, man. Sure. I just don't like, I just don't like playing the color this thing. Every single feel... utility land we get a list, Jace is like, oh, man, like this the... is why it sucks. Basic man. Island. No, it's, it's not, not a fetch <laughs> land. It's fetch not, lands are the it's best lands in the zone. It's and that's the problem. Zone. Sure, it's never sure. I will say Emergent Zone is one of the best utility lands. Absolutely. It's fantastic. I love it. I agree with you there. However, you know what? I'm just gonna play if, Alchemist Refuge over there. No, yeah. That, that if sucks. if you can if you can put stuff in the deck that you know it goes along, um, my 
Is it Dex, right? I love the uh, Lighthouse, mm -hmm. right? Cool. Pass for colorless, no big deal, but you can loot later for three mana? Hey, okay. Sure. I like it. I like it. Right? Yeah. Like, stuff like that. So. Yeah, man. Well, Jace is not about the utility land. Not about I'm not. Land. I don't. Not about the utility Jace land. doesn't like lands in general. No, I mean, yeah, I do only play 33 of them. The thing is, I, I would rather, so much of the time, I tweak the number of lands in my deck. And then I'll play like three or four or five games, and in every single one of those games I'll be land flooded. I'm like, fuck, bring it back to the 33. I don't know. Maybe it's just a bad luck thing. I feel like 33 is what works for me and how I tend to build my decks. You know, I I tend to have a lower curve, but that's just me, right? Sure. Okay. So, hopping off of that kind of, or skipping right over mana doors. Does that mean you play a higher number of mana doors? I play a shit ton. If or I have the chance to play mana door. I play it. Like I'm very like if I'm in a green deck and I want to play Elvish Mystic, I'm also playing Finhorn Elves and Lanor Elves and Birds of Paradise. See, I'm the same, but with the the okay. forest spells. So like if I'm in green, I'm playing uh, Nature's Lore. Nature's, Nature's Lore. Lore. Nature's 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 Lore. Um, and that's why I wouldn't normally play, like in a in a band deck, I wouldn't play Lanor Elves or Elvish Mystic. I'd play Avacyn's Pilgrim. Okay. Or, especially Birds Cause of Paradise. Because yeah. yeah. they give you other colors. Because they give you other Yeah, and yeah. the and the band, uh, mm -hmm. Pyrrhic, Noble Pyrrhic. Noble Pyrrhic, yeah, yeah, for sure. You get one of those, actually. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, they're cheap I, now. I, they're like I five, agree with that. Mm -hmm. Generally, I don't play your Elvish Mystics and your Finhorn Elves, stuff like that. I play mono green decks or two color decks primarily. Yeah. 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 Right, anything more um, than that. Like, Mon Monkey, I think, had, like, 25 ramp sources, but that's just because it was hard. I want to have Monkey out on turn two. Yeah. I got you. And, I mean, I guess that that's also kind of a thing. Like, if you want to run into less lands... Um, you got to make up for it somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you got to make up for somewhere. Uh, which is where the Mana Rocks come in. Mana mm -hmm. Rocks and the Mana Dorks, they're kind of in the same the same ramp Mana Rocks are better. It's the hard, that's the hardest part of building a deck for me. All right, Felwar Stone, it's, Arcane Signet, Soul Ring, and then whatever Signets are in your deck, and then that, I'm just plugging plug and play. I mean, I'd rather play the it's, Talismans. Oh, okay, Talismans. so there's so many good ones that you can play, even at two mana. Yeah. Right, if you have a three color deck, right, obviously, generally, you play Soul Ring, mm -hmm. yeah. play Arcane Signet, play Felwar Stone. Yeah. Right, and so then in a three color deck, you have six, mm -hmm. right, Talismans you can play, and six um, Signets you can play. Yeah. Or at too many. So we got to start making cuts somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so, I right. mean, a lot of people favor the talismans because it's mana right away versus you have to filter in. I like that. Sure. Yeah. I, sure. Do, I do I do prefer the, the talismans. I just said signets because, you know, that's what comes to mind. I prefer the signets on my artifact deck. I got right? you. My, I got you. my Stranger Things deck. Because you but, can filter all the colors mana you're making. But that's, well, yeah. Well, primarily it's because I specifically I need my commanders are black and white and red and, red and blue mm -hmm. specifically. So talismans don't generally help with that if I play... You know, if I play a Plains, and then I play, you know, an Island, can't cast my Commander, and I cast a Talisman, right, I, the Talisman has to make either white or black, mm -hmm. otherwise I can't cast Will. I've got you. Stuff like that. So I generally play this, I generally prefer the Signets over the Talismans in that deck for that reason, but, mm -hmm. yeah, that's kind of my... True. I mean, I guess it just depends, like you said, on the deck. Yeah. Um, like, my Yidra's deck is an Eldrazi deck, and colorless mana, specifically, the Diamond colorless mana, is important. Yeah. So that's why I have the talismans in there over signets. Yeah, because it's after the signets can't write signets. Can't they get the colors, colors I need, yeah. but also the colorless. Are that you I playing need. all your pain lands? I feel like that's an I awesome am. way to yeah. do that. All the pain lands, as many filter lands as I can. Plus, there's basics oh, and, and lands. try lands as well. But sunken, especially, sunken I, runes are expensive nowadays. What is sunken runes? The blue black one. Filter. Oh, the, the the filter filter lands. I'm not playing yeah. those. I'm playing like the one from Dominaria. Like pay one and tap it. Make a man of any color. Oh, that's what you oh. mean. Okay, I got you. I got you. Because it has for colorless. Yeah. Yeah, are you Light playing stuff. Mycosynth Gardens? No. I think so. You should be. It has that ability, mm -hmm. and it's awesome. It has that ability. The gates, and there's two of the gates that do as well. There's, there's a bunch of, there's like 11 or 12, you know, pay one mana filter to any color. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. That and makes it's sense. like that because the deck is mostly colorless, so if I'm not, I can yeah. use my colorless mana to do something else. Right. Um, creatures. Let's creatures. Talk about that. Next topic. The meat, the meat of the deck. The meat of the deck. Meat. Unless you're me. That's true. Depending, I mean, it always depends on the deck. <laughs> but if, you're, if your goal is to hit somebody with your creatures, it has to be 30 or more. 
Sure. Okay. I like that baseline. That's generally where I start. Mm-hmm. If if I'm a creature deck and my goal is to hit somebody in the teeth with creatures or do something with my creatures, yep. be it aristocrats, mm-hmm. reanimation, and that kind of stuff, sure. Uh, 30 is a good starting point. Mm-hmm. I like agree. I'm, I'm pretty sure my elf deck has uh, 35 creatures in it. Yeah I, think, yeah, I think I have about that in my elf deck as well. Maybe a little bit more. Uh, but, yeah, right. Eryxanthes runs about 30, somewhere around 30, 32, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, now, again, it's a pod deck. It's, uh, uh, you have a bunch of effects. I don't need as many spells in the deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, but most of my decks definitely don't run 30 creatures. They probably should. True, and it, it depends on, like I said, what you're doing with those creatures. Like some, like the equi- equipment decks, okay, yeah, tend to run less creatures, less creatures. because you're stacking effects on one creature usually. Yeah, Voltron um, decks for sure. Yeah, um, and there's there's only so many right in that case. There's only so many, um, like I guess we'll call them utility creatures that you mm-hmm. can play in that deck, and you run a slot, and you go, okay, I have sixteen creatures, but adding other stuff is just. It's just and, not worth it. It's, right. you know, it detracts um, from the deck. Right. So the one that I kind of look at is like my my Akroma Roger deck, mm-hmm. my Akroma Rograk deck. Basic, basically a Voltron deck, right? Mm-hmm. It's a keywords deck. Uh, I want hit. I want to hit somebody in the face for forty commander damage with, with Rograk. Yeah. That's the, goal, that's the goal of the deck. <laughs> yeah. um, that's the goal of the deck. Uh, and so I mean, it plays. It's not a you know a full Voltron with auras and enchantments and uh, equipment and stuff like that. But it does run. Eight to ten pieces of equipment, and you know, eight or so auras, and then bunch of bunch of ways to pump rock, uh, rogue rack up, make changes, right? And so in that deck, you start running out of creatures with things to do, but I still play things like Mother of Runes, mm-hmm. Giver of Runes, yeah, Giver yeah. Protection, and that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, those types of decks definitely less creatures, mm-hmm. I think. And spell slinger decks, of course, they run way, way, way low. My Dragon's Approach um, deck, it's a spell slinger's deck. It's just got a dragons approach deck. Dragons approach. <laughs> yeah, it's got you know seven creatures in it. Jesus, including the commander. Yeah, um, that's crazy. There's my, so many. There's so many. What colors is it? It's mono red oh, right now. It's mono red. There are a decent number of creatures you can play in that deck though. Mm-hmm. So you get Bergie's Bergie Storm. So who's the commander? It's a uh, Urbas. Just it's Urbas just Urbas. It's, regular, it's a new Urbas. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so, you, so you get Bergie. Bergie Storm Kill. Storm gutter Kill. Snipe. Oh, gutter Snipe. Snipe. You get all the effects of Gutter Snipe. There's three or four of them. There's there's more than that now, there's, but there's yeah, a lot. There's ring there's inscription. Yeah. Well, that's the art for ring, ring inscription. inscription. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, creature wise, I mean, I'm yeah. not playing any of those. But <laughs> you're not playing any of those. No, I'm wow. playing. I mean, Solfim. I can. It's right here. Solfim. Oh, Solfim. Yeah. What am I playing? In Solfim's this deck? good. Yeah. Okay. Again, I'm not gonna Solfim. do this every time, but I will take advantage of it while I can. Are you playing Young Peasy? Young, oh man, let's I mean, see. I love Young Peasy. Oh, Peasy in, in a deck that's Peasy that's sweet. made to like sling a bunch of spells, draw a bunch of cards. That's true. Young Peasy is mm, awesome. Don't spine dragon. Oh, because you can dragon. get it off your dragon's approach. Okay. Yeah, Solfim, okay. which doubles the Dong Creek combat damage, which is this entire deck. That's good. You draw cards equal to the, the damage the target opponent this turn. That's great. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah that card is great. Charger's Charger's incinerator. Incinerator's great. Let's see. Any other creatures in this deck? Oh, I guess creatures. we found a deck for the head, bro. Fire Servant. All right, so there's only f- uh, f- five <laughs> creatures in this deck. There's Urbrask and four creatures Wait, What in is deck. this card? Jesus. Um, but you make oh, an I argument. I, I am playing an absurd amount of Dragon's Approaches in here. I think yeah. I'm playing 50. 50 Dragon's 50 Approaches? 50 Dragon's Approaches. 50 Dragon's Approaches? Not at all. Can you draw 50 Dragon's Approaches? Yeah. I can definitely. But at that point, the game should be would be well over. Somebody if you should did, be over if you didn't have fifty. Exactly, and I mean, this is a bit of a meme, but I mean, those those decks exist out there too, where people That's don't, true. don't want to play. That's you know, they're playing uh, some. They're playing true. Jetmere, and they only want to play like nine cats yeah. in the deck. You know, I, I have nine cats at home. I play I put, nine I put, cats in my Jetmere deck. I put tons of restrictions in, on my decks. Hmm. Right, just just you know, just to do different stuff. Yeah, just make it interesting. Yeah. Um, so Jace earlier, you know, I don't like to play same type of deck in multiple decks right if i have one deck that's really a reanimator style and i have another one that does the same thing also reanimator one of them's got to go it's jason and i are having it's like problem. we got it's like we <laughs> got to have a duel welder, with welder deck. Okay. Okay. Comes down on top. side yeah. podcast okay. let's talk about the welder okay. archetype no, not right now, <laughs> not right now. <laughs> um, um i do uh, want to talk about that though that's we, we will. That is we, something we've sure. got that slotted later but, yeah um but, but moving on, uh, card draw. 
Card draw is Ooh, one of those things draw. that is Ooh. hard, hard to I, find slots for. I agree. I agree. And and it's hard, right? There's, there's two types of card draw, mm -hmm. right? And it's hard to figure out how many of one you should run versus the other. What are the two types, Derek? Right, so two types of card. There's unconditional, where regardless of what happens, you draw X amount of cards, mm -hmm. right? Consider and draw your card, right? Regardless of what happens. Yeah. Pure Dane is going to draw your card. Right. Harmonize will always draw always you three draw cards. You three cards. Oh, I love that card. Yeah. It will always draw you three cards. It doesn't really matter. And then there's conditional, right? Your greater good, mm -hmm. your momentous fall for your big green decks, your rich cards expertise, right? Um, and then you have your deadly dispute. Mm -hmm. I look at it the same way. You have to have a creature to sack or artifact to sack. If you don't, that card is dead. You're not drawing any cards. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And so it's hard to figure out and balance those two things. Mm -hmm. Right. In my opinion, or generally how I approach it, I want some number of both unconditional card draws, generally not as good, but it doesn't matter, you're guaranteed the cards. Conditional card draw, generally you can you can there are better options out there if you can meet the conditions. And I find myself struggling between which one to do over the other. I got you. It also depends on the colors you're in. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mono right. black has its own version of card draw, but yeah. Yeah, you know, you have to whisper, and sign in blood, and balance those. Or even if you're in blue black, you know, how many do you play um, Phyrexian Arena? Okay, sure. Um, right. A whole over preordain or something like that. Can we right. talk the answer about... is yes, but uh, Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I mean, I guess it depends. Lord of the Nazgul, you want that preordain over. I mean, mm. Phyrexian Arena though is three mana, and bad. it takes three turns to get to get three cards. I don't know. Uh, I want to. I, I don't be, know. If it, I don't know if it's as good as it used. I want to be losing. It's a definitely not as good as it used to be. Yeah. But it's still consistent card draw. Like That's true. That, like you said, that that guaranteed that, that card draw. Every yep. turn you are going to lose a life and draw a card. That's true. That's true. Um, where that period you only get that one, that one. Still, uh, still unconditional. But in that case, yeah, it's it's card draw over time versus yeah. I need card. So for preordain, I also tag in selection onto it, right? Because you'd be able to scry a little bit. This is true. So it's like selection and card draw now versus card draw later. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it's just hard to figure out how many you need of each, mm -hmm. right? Your deck needs some number of some card draw. Number. We're playing a hundred card singleton. Yeah. Your deck needs no, some yeah. amount of card. Draw. Now, pause for a sec. Can we just on that topic from before? Can we talk about reckless impulse and rend resolve? I do well, love impulse I, draw. I love <laughs> Red's those version two of card cards. draw. I love impulse draw. I have a deck. With Evelyn, that runs a decent amount of impulse draw, right? Because it's basically Grixis Prosper. Mm -hmm. That's how I play the deck, and I don't play either. Yeah. I, I yeah. have the same thing with the Rocco <laughs> deck. It's Naya Prosper, and, and the I, commander uh, already draws cards. And I don't, and I don't play either. And that's well, one of the should things, I? Though. That's oh, one of the things. Like, does your commander draw you cards? They, right. Yeah, maybe. that is that is now, part of the discussion. I just I, love those. I, I will say awesome. personally, like the last two or three times I played the deck, there were multiple times throughout the game where I was like, I need to draw some more cards, mm -hmm. and I didn't have anything to do it with. And so, I mean, there's there's an argument for I should probably be running those types of yeah. cards. So my, my yeah. personal right. thoughts it's is, red is nice that whisper. if you're running more, sure. so and this goes That's back kind to of, yeah, this goes back to the the lands thing. If you're running more lands, you should be running more card draw. Agreed. Um, Agreed. Because it, you know you have you, less spells. You, you get, That's true. One, you're going to draw more things. Right. Uh, and if you and if you do draw lands, you have that cleanup step where you can just Dump get up. rid of them. Yep. Um, you could you guarantee and your land for turn, so you right. are going to do something every to your, turn. Right to your even point if, 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 it's draw, if it's draw three cards a turn, because you just have to sink all that mana into Thrasios. Yeah, that's still doing something. Yeah. And yeah. if people are paying attention to threat assessment, you're not the threat. Mm -hmm. You can keep doing what you're doing. Or you probably should be the threat if you're drawing a bunch of cards. Well, that's true. If you're drawing three cards a turn with Thrasios, <laughs> someone's going to be like, uh, "Guys, <laughs> wait a minute, uh, somebody, we have a problem." Yeah, Houston. Yeah. What about you, Jade? What do you mean, what about me? What are your thoughts on card draw? My thought on card draw. Uh, so, okay, I... so let's pause real quick. How much card draw do you run in your mass deck? Pull it out. Let's see. Let's. This is. I'm very lucky because I get to look we, at this deck. We have these decks on us. Uh, how many card draw effects do you run in Arismith? You have one in the command zone, air quotes, with uh, Karuga. I, right, so I do have Karuga. Um, I have. Okay, we're technically. Not, and we're not. If we're not counting okay, pod as card draw, because I don't. I count it as a tutor. Okay, yeah. I would count it as a tutor or a tech piece, yeah. right, realistically. And so, I mean, if we're just looking at card draw, I think I run four to five okay. sources. 
Let me see, what deck do I play all the time? This is a deck I play a lot. Um, Tiamat? Tiamat. Sure, I guess I could say Tiamat. That one's cheating, though. Uh, yeah, that one cheats with the dungeon. <laughs> um, let's just look at this new deck I built. The Solora deck. Let's see. Jace going through his. Okay, L less than I thought. I'm playing six sources of card draw in my MS deck. Six sources of card draw? Okay. What do we, what do we got here, Jace? We got a, a Sauron, a Commence the Endgame, Hostile Negotiation, which is a card I want to talk about. That card is so awesome. So, Sauron. Um, I mean, sure. I guess it's. Kind of. Kind, kind of. It's not, okay. it's not really. Okay, commence the end game, spell counter counter, draw two cards, a mass X, number of cards in your hand. Okay, so unconditional. Sauron's basically kind of, if we break it up right, he's kind of conditional. You need a creature to attack. Yeah. Right, you need an army to, or you need some other way to tempt you. Right, I don't know if there's any other way nah, to tempt you. Nah, not really. Attack, right, but commence the end game, you're going to get two cards regardless. Hostile negotiations, you're going to get your effect regardless. You Shadow Prophecy... I would consider unconditional, though it is based on the types of lands and stuff that you run. But it's still unconditional. You're still going to get some cards off of it. Honor the God Pharaoh, again. Um, discarding a card to draw to and amass. I would consider that unconditional. Um, sure, you have to have a card to discard. But, but that's basically the only condition, and that's fine. Rish Cars Expertise. Love this card. It's very Classic. conditional, but it is very conditional. super good in this deck. Very it is very good. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, you know, five, six or so, six or so sources of card draw. Um, crazy thing is, like, those are, most of those are kind of expensive. So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of, this is a very expensive mana cost deck. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so for years, mono blue, I expect you have a decent amount of card draw in the deck. It's about mono... 12 pieces <laughs> of dedicated card That's draw. That's mono blue. My mono blue deck runs... More than that, but my commander is also card draw. So That's true. I need to put your commander into this deck. Oh, grass? Oh, great. yeah. And then put in my, my favorite card from the deck. The whole reason I built the deck, the deck, the sappers in here. Deck is fantastic. I don't even know what it does. No. Nope. Okay. It's a two mana merfolk. It's a one one. One in the blue. It's a one one. When it becomes blocked, you draw three cards. I like it. Yeah. It's great in grass because it is, if it gets blocked, I get to bounce it back to my hand and still draw three cards. And just replay and do it again. It never gets blocked. <laughs> I have to do my creatures. Uh, you know, I want them to come back. And my favorite piece yeah. of card on this deck though is Gadwick the Wise. I love oh, Gadwick. He's blue suns on a stick, and then is I can it make a he him. Or a she? I have no idea. I think it's a she. Uh, um, I love no, that card. Though. His name is spoken only in whispers, but he hears the story just the same. All right, so it's a dude. Okay, Gadwick. What I love this. One of my favorite cards in my grass deck too. Oh yeah. I mean, I it's... can pay X into into one. You know, four drop, draw one card. Um, I still get the value with my flash spells, tapping things down, and I've, then when I've, I can attack with him. I can bounce him with my commander yep. and yeah. cast him again for. I've done two that. Or three. I've definitely cast him for X equals zero many times as well, mm -hmm. because whenever you cast a blue spell, you tap something down. It's exactly. fantastic. It's fantastic. So I mean, it's it's cards like that, you know, that uh, you got to think about. Like it's mm -hmm. a creature, but it's also a draw spell, so I don't have to. I can choose to run one less of either. Yeah. Yep. Now, as well as Grez, is. are you playing Cunning Evasion in the deck? What is that? It's a two-mana enchantment from OG Modern Horizons. Whenever a creature you control becomes lights. blocked, you may bounce it to your hand. Oh, I need to get one of those in this it's deck. another effect that Grez likes. I took it out of my Grez life, but... Oh, well, I mean, because your commander does that. Yeah, I mean, it's in every, it's, it's in basically every list that I've ever seen for it. Mm. Right, and I definitely looked it up, but it's in there. And it makes sense. I mean, we need redundant effects as well, like but, you, we've yeah. all said before. But my deck has kind of changed over time. And the better effect that I like, instead of Cunning Evasion, um, as, as essentially kind of a secondary effect to Grazlax, right? Because it's just redundant effect to Grazlax, um, is um, Teferi's Veil instead. <laughs> We're listening. We're listening. Hey guys, I have to take you're a just, piss. What just, is our time? You're just, you're just adding the amount of I have of to work take a piss. What is... You. I mean, we're time? at 50 minutes, so we're getting pretty close we're to wrapping close. it okay. up. We're getting pretty close. Okay. All right. Um, Cut back in now. Jesus, okay. But, um, yeah, so not a big fan of 
hunting invasion. Took it out. I put it into Fairy's Veil. I like it better. I don't know if you know what that does. I don't. No. Nope. Two and a blue enchantment. Whenever a creature attacks, phase it out at the end of combat. Whenever a creature you control attacks, it phases out at the end of combat. It's reminiscent of reconnaissance. Yeah. I do like that, actually. I, I like it. It protects all my stuff. Uh, if my if my creatures get blocked, I get a bounce into my hand. If they don't get blocked, they just phase out. Mm -hmm. And you're protected from blood wipes. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and again, it's it's I see it as kind of a redundant effect of cunning evasion. I don't have to replay the creatures. Those mm -hmm. the creatures do basically all have ETB effects, and they're always good. But I learned that I'd much rather instead of replaying all of my creatures, I'd much rather them stay around. And you know, sure, I take damage because of it when it happens. But I don't, I don't put it, um, protection spells in the same slot as like interaction. Yes. Yes. Protection spells are interaction. I do spells play for me. heroic intervention and Valkyrie rebirth in my system. Sure, right. Malakir Rebirth, that would count as a utility land slot. Intervention is definitely an interaction slot. True, with all these um, new cards, like uh, to Tamiyo's Safekeeping, and any, any other card like that, there's a Tameo's lot of them. Tamiyo's Safekeeping is so um, Out the Back is one of my new favorites. Out, slip Out the Back? Slip Out the Back, yeah. yeah. Seed of Hope. And so I've seen a lot of people talk about playing underneath removal spells rather than playing more removal. I like that. Um, which will definitely have a top uh, an episode on removal. Or we can um, talk about that a little bit, yeah. We don't have a lot of time left, but we can definitely talk a little bit about it. So, I'm in that episode. No, right now. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so yeah, uh, but, you, you yeah, all you so, all are on the same page. You know, we we all build different in interaction obviously. pieces, uh, of course, and uh, that you know that's what makes this game great. Is great. that everybody yeah. you know we can come to the table with the same commander, and it could most likely be very different, especially with that's how many a, cards we're getting. Right now, I like that for a podcast episode. We all pick the same. We all pick commander. the same commander, and then we, okay, we pick the same commander, and, and then we all build. We come, deck. you know, we we don't uh, talk to each other about the deck until Just the day up. of the, and then we talk about it. Interesting. Just show up, yeah. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna we're gonna pick Writing a three down. a three color commander, right? And like Ooh. let's say it's Esper, Ooh. I'm gonna fill the deck with all planes, and I'm just gonna be like planes as soon as I get an island in the swamp, get the dead plane. <laughs> Oh, you told thing. me about that. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> so I'm like, as soon as I get one, we're going to get there. Ah, this deck sucks. <laughs> and they just never show anybody else this. <laughs> no way. I'm just going to talk to Mike. You know, I'm going give to give me the busted Esper cards. Here you go, yeah. bud. Yeah. Damn. Easy peasy. But yeah, I like, I like that idea. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll look at that for sure. All right. So, boys, what okay. did we learn today? Everybody builds decks differently. Don't always follow the guidelines that everybody tells you. There's no set gotta, number to these things. There's not. You gotta test that. You, you gotta gotta that that's the big to, thing that people yeah. need to take away from you any of those videos, test. any of these podcast episodes that you have to test. You have, you have to, to you actually have play have games to. of magic to you know make better. Goldfish decks. and goldfishing helps, but you have yeah, to have test to be, you have to test it in the wild. You have to meet other people. People make mistakes, you make mistakes. Yeah. You may have been reading a card. I've done this so many times. Yeah. I've read a card wrong. <laughs> you go, wait a minute. And I've goldfish on anything. Yeah. And then someone comes like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. For sure. But yeah, and you also have to be okay with things not working out. Exactly. Right. Yeah. How many times have you how many times have you, did you tweak Maria before it got to where it is now? So many times. And I'm taking the deck apart yeah, as well. Good. Just to steal all the expensive things. A shit ton. Right. My yeah. artifact deck, right, started out in League as Tivit. We added a fourth color. It was the Stranger Things partners, mm -hmm. right? Will and Lucas. And then it went it went from four colors to two colors to three colors to two colors to a different four color. Mm -hmm. We went all over the place. Oh, I mean just just look at my food deck. Yeah. I'm, I'm stuck here in Amzan now because I like hobbits. Yeah. But the food deck has gone to You gotta to do all a five color five food colors. deck, dude. Yeah. Dragon's approach has gone to all five colors. That's true, that one has, yeah. Um so yeah, you have to test, you have to try stuff out, you have to be okay making mistakes. I like that. And be okay with making mistakes. Yeah. That's the I mean, takeaway. Yeah. yeah. And and I mean it's it's totally okay. And I do this a lot of time where we'll show up at the shop and everything, and everybody's like, Oh, what are we playing? And I'm like, I'm playing a deck that I'm haven't played yet, I'm just testing it. Or I added in a dozen new cards, we're just testing it out. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, let's run with that, however you want to do it. If so, I get stomped, I get stomped, but I'm just testing it to see what it'll do. Yeah. Right. Same thing that I do with my like my hundred dollar CEDH mm -hmm. deck. First time I'm like, I've never played it before. And I sat down and I went, I almost won. It's the same <laughs> this thing with League. We do the same thing with League. Yeah, you know, League. We show up with precons, we upgrade them for a few weeks. It doesn't work out. We have to switch to a different lane. I've definitely yeah. we're I'm, we're going into week three and six of the cards I put in week two have already come out yeah. of the deck. I've, I've had a bunch of things. <laughs> yeah, I've done I've done that thing. too, yeah. I'm really right, excited so for you, the league episode. You, you gotta 
Yeah, you have to test. You have to be okay with things not working out mm-hmm. perfectly. You have to be okay with making changes. Um, be open to feedback as well. Ask questions. Yes. Right? When building games, yes. Ask, ask questions. questions. You have an entire um, play group. Yep. Yeah, we Depending, are very. No matter how big, you I have love, play, other people who do the same thing you're doing. I love EDH rec, right? Going and seeing ideas, but you have Ooh. like you have to be able to talk to people. Is that, is that a is that a hot hot take right there? Well, I mean, it's not that hot. A lot of people use EDH rec. I just like yeah. I don't. I feel like Scryfall is very much more like helps me creatively than. EDH well, of course we'll have an episode on that. We'll have sure, an episode on that. Sure, yeah. sure, but don't, just don't, not that EDH just, rec is don't bad. Spill all the tea. I don't just, spill I just all meant, the beans, right? Just, well, all the topics. But I just meant, like, if you use a website in general, EDHREC is the most common one, right? Like, it's going to give you suggestions, but you still have to tweak and test yeah. things and find things that work. True. Right? If you right. take that average list off of EDHREC and go to your shop, it may work, but you may play through yeah. and go, oh, I'm going to tweak oh, some man. things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ask questions and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much that's all the insight I have yeah. for today. Exactly. So, so old, this was old ass, old ass Derek over here. Well, that's Derek well, with that's the Derek. hottest takes. With big words. Big oh, words. Man. Big boy words <laughs> for a big boy channel. This has been Tabletop. With a big nope. boy. That's not the same thing as channel. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, let me yeah, plug yeah. mine real quick. Uh, <laughs> this has been Kitchen Table Cable. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next week. Next, next week. week. Next week.